channel thanks for stopping by and today I wanted to talk about what I think is the future of insurance for the car industry so you have probably heard of snapshot through progressive there's other ones I know that's a big one I know other insurance companies are doing it but one of the big ones I wanted to talk about is what GM is doing and has done for a while now and it's called smart um, smart driver ID which is basically, it's snapshot through Progressive, except you don't have to plug anything in your OBD2 port. It's all done through the car. So what is that? It basically takes your braking input and your acceleration input, and based on that, it gives you a driver score. It's the basic gist of it. So basically, how hard you're hitting the brake, if you hit it, I'm guessing it's more than like 50% of brake pedal input. That's considered a hard brake. And I'm think I'm pretty sure it's more than 30% throttle input, and that is a hard acceleration. From I've done I've gotten that through. I have a monitor in my car that tells me what my accelerator uh, pressure is, like pedal sensors at percentage wise, and I have the same thing for the braking, telling me how much ABS load I have going on. So that's what I'm basing those numbers off of. And so last month in September. I got a 96 driving score out of 100. I went 898 miles and I had zero hard brakes and zero hard accelerations. Yes, that's surprising. I'm a 21 year old male. That is pretty impressive, I think, because my, my category for people isn't very good. We're considered aggressive drivers. We text and drive, we Snapchat and drive. We do all these things except drive basically is what the insurance companies think. So for me to have that driving score, I think is pretty amazing. And no, it doesn't go by your age at all. It doesn't do that. But one of the other things that does, it is calculated into it is it does it based on where you drive. So if you're in a high traffic area, like where I'm from, say outside of DC, and you're commuting from inside the city to outside the city, and you're sitting in bumper to bumper traffic for three hours going 20 miles, your driving score is actually be impacted a lot based on that. I've actually seen it sometimes drop down to like 60, like 40 points lost just for the way, like where you're driving because it's like you're higher risk. I guess you have a higher chance of getting an accident. You're going to end up hitting the brakes more often. It, I mean that all that stuff could happen, but I think the insurance companies are basically just saying if you're in these high level uh, traffic areas you're at a higher risk of getting in the accident so this is all for the insurance companies so that they can weed out if you're the guy who lives in so you live on the country and you never in any traffic and there's a low population rate well what are the odds of you crashing into someone else if you only see 10 cars in the day versus someone who sees 4,000 cars in the day you know so that's how I think they're basing that one off of but so the other thing is that does play a good factor into it. So ways to get better scores. What I found out is if you can plan when you drive, I'm lucky at the age of 21 and the job I have where I'm the hours I'm working are usually in the morning, like early, early in the morning before everybody's on the road or I'm doing a reverse commute so I'm not hitting traffic. So that's helping. Other things you can do are and it actually tells you when you start getting your driving score back. Things like longer trips, none of this factors into it, but longer going like trips, like less trips. So, you know, if you have to go to the grocery store, don't go home and then go to the, like, say you have to go to the dry cleaners, don't do two things, you know, two things, make that all one continuous trip. That way you have less chance of hitting traffic. You might not hit the brakes as much. And all this, like if you have road range, Oh my gosh, that will kill your score. Because you'll gun in, you'll slam on the brakes, all of a sudden you have a hard brake and a hard, um, a hard acceleration and a hard brake, and then your score is done. You can go from a 99 to a 50 real quick. And the only thing that's gonna help you is if you, if you do have a hard brake and a hard acceleration, then you would have to go drive like 50 miles to make it so that it doesn't look bad that way, you know. It's not like, oh gosh, she has 10 hard brakes and two miles of driving. That will destroy your score. There's just no coming back from it. Over the, so, 
last month I got a 96 out of 100, and I did 898 miles. I had no hard brakes, no hard accelerations. I've done it for over a year now, and I think in 15,000 miles, I've had, actually, I know, oh, wait. yeah, so 15,000 miles, 105 hard brakes, and 107 hard accelerations in 15,000 miles. They say you, it's typical to have th um, a few. So when they say a few, I'm thinking three or four hard accelerations a day, and then a couple hard brakes, I'm thinking like one or two hard brakes here in a day. Well, what's the average person's day, you know? I'm thinking if you do an average commute, I'm thinking it's 30 miles, because then that would give you like 15 to 12,000 miles a year. So it's all so variant. But one of the main points I want to get across is this is the future of how insurance companies are going to do uh, do insurance quotes. They're going to look through it. They're going to, everybody's, it's just so easy to do. If it's being built in by these huge car manufacturers, you got to assume at some point this is going to be the way of insuring people because you get to weed out who's hitting the gas pedal and who's slamming on the brakes. You know, it's not a fair thing to think, you know, if I'm stuck in a bumper bumper traffic and, you know, you're weeding, you're driving along and you're, you know, you've been at work eight hours during the day and, oh, you slightly hit the brake pedal too much. You know, that couldn't even have been an aggressive act. Like, you just hit the brake a tiny bit too hard. Now your score during the day just dropped. And you're not even an aggressive driver. Like, you could be a grandma driving and all of a sudden, just because you went to the grocery store and you hit the brake pedal too hard, oh my, there's your score. So it's not very, it's not fair, but I think it is a good step forward and not having to pay for other people's insurance. You're not paying for Billy Bob Joe's insurance because he drives, he decides he's going to do a burnout at every stoplight. You're not paying for Missy's in, uh, insurance because she decides that she needs to slam on the brakes every two seconds because she's texting and driving. So it's fair and unfair. But I'm kind of glad to see that this technology is out there, and I think it's really cool because you get to become a better driver, a more efficient driver. And what I've done throughout the year so far with all this stuff I've gotten, I've raised my MPG from 34 to 36 combined. I drive a 2015 Chevy Sonic RS, if that means anything to anyone. Uh, well, it's, yeah, if you have a Sonic... I, an RS has a shorter gear ratio, so on the highway it doesn't, it's not as fuel efficient. So I found out slower I drive, you know, slower I'm driving, the more fuel efficient it's getting. It's not, so I mean, and that's just, it should be common sense. The slower you accelerate, the better your gas mileage is in the end. So that's pretty cool. The one thing the app, these apps don't account for though, they do take track of how fast over 80 you're going, but that doesn't affect your driving score, which I find pretty funny. So you could be sitting at 82 miles an hour on the highway, you know, here in Virginia, that's a, like, that's a reckless driving. But then <laughs> that thing, if you didn't have a hard acceleration or a hard brake, would just be like, okay, cool, this guy has a, he was in a low traffic area, that's a 100 for the day. But you were doing 82 on the highway, which is a reckless drive. So it's kind of funny. I think it's pretty, pretty cool technology that's out there. It's amazing how, what, I mean five years ago this stuff you wouldn't even imagine it now you're getting to use all these car com all the computers in the car for insurance purposes it's kind of scary that someone's actually in there watch basically the the car's watching your driving habits it's kind of scary you know back in the if you had a 97 honda accord like i 